Friends, today is Good Friday, a day in which we remember the cross of Christ. And I want to recall this text from Luke 23, 34, that line when Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. There's a story that uh, author Maxie Dunham tells is of the First United Methodist Church of Dallas during one Lenten season when it erected this huge crude cross right in front of its sanctuary. And this church was positioned across the street from a museum of art, a place of beauty and, and creation. And apparently some of the community folk took exception to this. In fact, one caller was bothered so much by the contrast of this lovely museum and this rugged, ugly cross, they actually called the church and said to the church and the pastor, can't you do something about that dreadful cross? I'll bet there's not a single Christian in their walk of life and faith that hasn't asked God at one point, can't we do something about that dreadful cross? Reality is we have, although we have not known what we were doing because we have taken that cross and we have polished it in gold and put jewelry on it and we have marched it into beautiful cathedrals. We've taken that cross and we've made accent jewelry out of it, tattoos, lapel pins. So then gone are the splinters and gone are the nail holes and gone is the blood. It's a dreadful cross. You know, the cross of Christ is dreadful, folks. It is. We know that. It was a tool of torture in the Roman Empire. It was a sign of ridicule, of death, despair. It's a sign of suffering for those who did wrong. It was a sign of the ultimate power of the Roman Empire over the common person. And we should never forget what it was. Because it is in this moment it becomes a was. It is in this moment that Christ's loving sacrifice, that God's grace takes that dreadful cross and makes it a hopeful promise. Not through some power of leaping off the cross and taking it to strike everyone with, but through humble, life-giving, self-giving love and sacrifice. It is that time when God's message of loving sacrifice shows us the way to life and hope and salvation for all, for the world. Christ's blood on that cross washes away the fact that it was a sign of despair. It changes that forever. It's no longer a sacrifice of life, but a promise and hope for life. The intersection of humanity and God. When we look at the cross, we should remember that dreadful day of God's loving sacrifice in Christ. And we should pause and feel the enormity of the cost. And then in faith, we move from grief and suffering and death to gratitude, to life giving love. And we, we've been through that this year. We have been through sickness and grief and loss again. And we come now to this day of turning point again, even as the virus fades and the vaccines rise, we hear the story again of person after person with their life giving sacrifice that helps us to bring us out of this time of death, bring us out of this despair and into the hope. But we cannot move too quickly. We must pause on this good Friday. Now there can be no denial about how challenging it is to live faithfully in a world that is still sick and selfish and sinful and to stay focused on and aware of that. And we know that there are high costs to those who claim to live for the future in Christ. But we cannot move away too quickly. We pause on this Good Friday to face the dreadful cross, the point that turned 
from death to life. Because we must remember, to avoid the dreadful is sometimes to risk missing the divine. Gracious God, may your will be done in our lives. Amen.